Welcome back to another edition of everybody's favorite class. My favorite class. Um, let's see. Any any questions or anything before we get started? Trevor. What you didn't get it is due today. <laughs> Everyone came to, to my office hours except for you. No, no, okay. Uh, no, um, there won't be another one. Uh, I think what we're just going to do is, instead of four weeks, we're going to give you five weeks for the final project, which means we're going to crank it up a little bit. Um, the expectation will be probably, I don't know, at least 20 hours of work a week, hopefully, in terms of what's going on for the final project. 10 to 20 hours. You know, it depends. Everyone's different. Yeah. So think about how long it took you to do assignment two. And I know different folks had sort of different rates of time with it. But um, you know, take that, and that'll be a good gauge. So if you spent, you know, if you're a super fast coder and no Objective-C and all this stuff, you probably did it pretty quickly. Um, so you'll probably be able to do whatever project you're working on it somewhat quickly. Uh, but anyways, I'm going to write something up tonight, and it will appear in the Google group. And um, basically on Monday, you guys are going to turn in a little, a little paragraph of some sort saying, hey, here's what I want to do. And you're going to come meet Ken and I in office hours to say, here's what I want to do. And we're going to tell you, no, that's too easy. And then when there's stuff that's super hard, we're going to say, yes, that's super hard. So you should do that. Um, <laughs> Or, you know, well, we'll be nice. And uh, we want you to do something that you know you'll be able to finish because at the end, you know, or, you know, finish to where it's, it's something useful and then possibly as a starting point for a future class that Ken might be teaching. Um, so, uh, yes? Um, is it going to be a yeah, possible group or individual? Or is it so, uh, yes, yes, yes. Um, the, in terms of groups, groups of two, um, max, uh, unless you have some super, super fantastic, amazing thing where it's going to take six people or four people or something. But two folks maximum, I would say. And uh, yeah. All right. So let's see what we got going on today. Um, so project descriptions will be due Monday. And I will put something up tonight. They're gonna, it's going to be very short, but you know. Um, the other thing about the project, what we were talking about doing is we're going to set up some sort of milestones. So you see Ken or I once a week um, between now and when the project is done, just to make sure that you know you're moving along at a at a reasonable pace and. Uh, Probably what we'll do is we'll let you decide what the milestone is because everybody's project is going to be a little bit different. But um, we'll talk more about that as we move forward. So today we're going to do more views uh, and do a bit of a recap. And I think the recap might be through that last example, the last bullet, this move me example. Uh, but we'll see how I feel as we go through. Uh, we're going to look at some, at some touch event handling stuff, which is, I think, where we left off last time with the Move Me example that Apple was so nice to write for us. And we'll also we'll continue with that example, and we'll look and see how to how to animate views and change some of the properties that most views have, well, that views have available to them. So um, I'll. I don't know. I was preparing lecture notes, and then I was like, oh, view hierarchy. I should talk about that some more. So I guess we'll, we'll consider this the recap. Um, so um, basically, so I, I think you know we've discussed it before, but the idea with these views is that we have some sort of tree structure in place that you know the different views are, you know, are net, you know, can be nested within other views, and um, basically, it's sort of this this layering of views that that gives us something like, well, in this case, it's the world. Well, it's the 
Uh, it's the clock application on your iPhone. So the view that's farthest away from you, um, the one that's farthest away from you, so this one, that one has everything in it. And as we move forward, it's just the kind of, you know, sort of the different little layers that, that composited together give us our final, um, well, that back view. So we have our window, which we discussed, is also a view. Um, and how you know, most app, well, all of our iPhone applications will have only one window. Uh, and in this case, we have this other little layer where we have a navigation bar. Another one where we have a tab bar. So we haven't talked about tab bars, but pretty much think about navigation. You know, the nav well, we haven't talked about tab bar controllers, but um, basically tab bar controllers have this tab bar thing that um, is more of a list that you, where you can choose the controller to look at and interact with versus the navigation controller that we dealt with, which was this stack-based thing. And if you understand one, the other one's pretty straightforward. Um, but we will look at an example of, uh, not today, but in the near future, of using a tab bar uh, and then using a tab bar with a navigation controller as well. So that's sometimes tricky for folks. Um, and then, you know, the stuff that we're really focusing on in terms of last lecture and now is this foremost view here, which is this custom view. So last time we looked at how to, how to build a little custom view, and um, today we'll look at how to interact with it and, um, and how to do some animation stuff with it. So um, I think that's, we'll leave it at that even though I have a few more slides, but, um, well, I'll mention this one real quick. So the, so last time we, st you know, we started looking at, well, how can we, how can we interact with the various things we need to interact with outside of Interface Builder? So in this case, we're, we're talking about views, and we saw that, you know, to create a view is pretty much like creating any other Objective-C class. Um, in this case, our views need some sort of a rectangle, so we've created this rectangle, and then we just say UI view alloc init with frame view rect. And I don't know if we really talked about init with frame last time, but we're going to make a change to the example from last time so that we use init with frame and we'll get a better feel for um, how to do even more through the code and sort of leave, um, kind of take another piece away. Um, or disconnect another piece from Interface Builder just to see how it works. Um, so, let's bring this. Oh, no. I don't want you to see this one because that's the one we're going to make. Okay. So, let's see here. Uh, if you have not seen the iPhone application programming guide, you should look through your documentation because it's basically it's the iPhone application programming guide. It tells you how to do all sorts of good stuff. Um, so I highly recommend looking at it if you haven't yet. Um, and then... So I'm going to bring up a fresh move me. And it doesn't like the fresh one. Okay, so if we remember last time, MoveMe was this little application that basically we did some stuff where we drew, where we looked to see how this little placard was drawn, and we saw that uh, if we double clicked outside of it, and we'll look at that interaction today, but it changes how the, uh, the greeting to some other language, and then we saw that it, we could click and move it around, and sort of when we do that, it, it kind of gets chubby a little bit and shrinks back down and then ends up, um, 
yeah, it just ends up going back to the center once we release it. So were there any questions from last time in terms of how some things worked? Um, so last time we talked about draw rect and set needs display. Um, is that I know that was a whole few days ago, I guess. Um, I finally, after doing this a million times, made a theme, you know, a little theme so I don't have to keep editing that font every time. Um, okay, so we looked, so last time we saw how, to, how the view draws itself and we left off at how can we actually interact with it and, you know, deal with the fact that someone's clicked on it. Um, and basically, cat, you know, how do we catch those events? So, let's see here. Uh, uh, so basically, so our UI view inherits from a UI responder. I'm sorry, did someone? Okay. Uh, inherits from a UI responder, and we haven't really looked at that yet, but if we look inside, we'll see that, you know, we'll see some useful methods here. So every single view that you have, uh, that you create or someone else creates, has, uh, you know, you have these methods. So touches began, touches moved, touches ended, touches canceled. So I think they're fairly descriptive. Um, and if you see, in terms of the parameters, so touches began, we get this, you know, an NS set. So basically we get a set of objects that happen to be touches, and we get some sort of event information. And uh, as far as the events go, I think that you basically, as far as the iPhone is concerned, you have touch events, the fact that you've touched something, or um, motion events, because there's an accelerometer in there, so you, you know, you might want to know that, that it just moved. And I'm doing this motion because I've been doing it all week at work for something. But, um, and nobody in iTunes can see that, I guess, because, but it's okay. So we have these, uh, these events. So if we jump back to, to our Move Me view, we see that, you know, something interesting happens when we click. Um, so let's go ahead and set a breakpoint and do that again. <coughs> so here we are in touches, uh, in touches began. And the first thing that's going on is we're saying touches any object. So touches is this NS set, so it's just this data structure that has objects in it. And we're saying, okay, give me any object. Uh, and in this case, we're doing that because we're not, we don't really care about multi, multiple touches. So we know that the iPhone can support multiple, multiple touches. But in this particular case, we just care about one of them. And, you know, if someone happened to put three fingers down or, or five fingers down, which five is the maximum touches that your iPhone supports as of now. Um, so this thing will just return us any one of those. And so we grab this touch, and if we look, we can see, you know, well, what's, what sort of information is inside this touch? Well, there's a timestamp, there's this phase thing, um, the tap count, so it'll keep track, you know, how many times uh, was something tapped. Um, location in window, previous location in window. We'll see. Um, many of these we don't really make use of directly, but we'll see right now how to use them. So we've gotten a touch, and the first thing that we're doing, so actually, I guess, you know, so the touch has a view. The first thing we happen to be doing in this particular case, uh, now that we've got a touch, is we say touch view. So basically it's an accessor or getter. Touch, give me your view, and you know, in this case, we're checking to see if it's not equal to the placard view. So that's our little gray thing with, uh, with our greeting on it. And 
in this case, what we're doing is we're saying, well, if the view that um, that was touched was not equal to the placard view, let's do something interesting. And in this case, we saw that if we double tap outside in the gray area, um, what would happen is that this this string would change. And this basically, that's exactly what's going on here. So if the touch happened outside of there, then let's check to see. Uh, well, in this case, I happen to touch inside there. But um, if we didn't touch inside this placard view, if the touch you know, was actually a double tap, then let's go ahead and swap the string. Um, so in this case, we actually did touch the placard. And uh, we see the next you know, sort of the, a method that you'll use quite regularly. So given the touch, what you want to do is say, you know, give me your location in some particular view. And in this case, it's, you know, it's our view itself, right? We care about where, where in this move me view did, did somebody, did this touch happen? So we can grab that and um, so we can look at the touch point and let's see if we zoom in. So we see that, you know, we had a, we, this touch location was at location 143, 253. Um, and we'll look at this, uh, this animation stuff shortly, but that's basically, you know, touches began lets you know that you just touched something and you can um, you can get some information about it. We'll we'll look at another example in a little bit where there are more things on screen and you have to actually do some work to decide, well, is something inside some particular view or a different view um, so that you know if you've done a multi-touch and you have multiple objects on screen, you can know, well, which ones am I touching? Um, so all right, let me move to touch is moved. And oops. So I'll disable this breakpoint so we don't get stopped in there again. Um, so if we touch and now move, um, well, what do we know? Touch is moved. Gets called. So we do the same thing this, as last time. So touches any object. So if someone put many fingers down and moved them, all we care about was one of them. And um, so again, we grab our view and we we check to see if it's the placard view. And uh, and in this case, it is. So same thing again. Touch location and view. So give us the actual coordinate where you where the touch happened. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the placard view center to wherever it is that we touched. So um, if you remember from last lecture, hopefully, um, right, so every, uh, our views had this frame and also had these bounds. And in this case, the one that was important was this center coordinate and that center was um, was in the coordinate system of the frame um, um, so yeah basically you can know the center of your object at any time and and interact with it and change it and when you change center it will update um, the frame origin location and um, All right, so we've got our location. And it looks like I touched in a pretty similar place this time, 143, 253. And so at this, you know, this current line, once we assign to center, we expect, we'll expect that um, the placard view should move. So I'm going to disable it so we can see it again. So click, and now as we move, Right, it's, it's you know. Let me click somewhere off to the side of it and see. Um, well, jumps me over to the center, but um, it's 
So, okay, pretty straightforward. If uh, if you want to move stuff around, you can see it's not uh, not super uh, complicated rocket science. Um, so touch is ended. Um, so now you know we've released touches are over, and we're notified of that. And again, in this case, we're looking to see well if if the touch ended inside the placard view, then you know what are we doing? In this case, we're disabling the user interaction. So sometimes you might not you know you might have a view and something interesting is happening, and you don't want to let the user interact with that view for some period of time. So in this case, you can say, all right, well, disable that interaction um, or yeah. Um, and then here we're going to do some other sort of uh, some, some, some other sort of animation which we'll look at in a second. The, the last one is touches canceled. So there's some situations where somehow, you know, for whatever reason, the, can the, the touch ended up getting canceled. Maybe your fingers slid off the phone. Uh, that might be a, a situation where that happens. And in this case, they're just saying, well, if that happened, just, I don't know, move the placard view to the center of, um, to the center of the move me view, which the placard view happens to be hanging out in. Okay, so let's let's take a look at another example where we actually have some multi-touch going on. Um, any any questions on on this? It's pretty it's pretty straightforward. The yes, Trevor. Is it randomly which touch you can have? So if you have two pairs, one in the black, one inside the black pair, the first one. Um, I'm not sure if I mean as far as we're concerned, it's I'd say it's random. Um, but I don't. Um, I'm not sure when when you ask the set for any object, uh, you know how things are set up in there. That you know, if it's always if it's going to work out so that it's always the first thing that you that you touched, or I'm not sure. So as far as we're concerned, it's random. It's any of them. Yes. I don't know if it's another way, but um, could we, for instance, say like tie like a timer to the movement? Of, of the, the object, so you can, the user could move it around, like twenty seconds of the activity, back. Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, so it's you could do that. I think so. We'll look at some animation stuff um, in a little bit. So let's bring that up again at that point. Okay. But you can definitely um, you can set up something called an NS timer that. Um, that you say when you touch, like on touch began, you you can set up that timer, and um, well, let's say we'll say on touch is ended because what you're talking about is let me move somewhere, release, and then after some point in time, this thing will go back. So you can on touch is ended, you can um, create this timer or start the timer, and you can tell the timer to fire at some point in time, and when it does, then what you could do is. You could do something to say, okay, well now, move, um, move this thing back to where it was. Um, and you know, so you can do things where you actually animate it back, or where you just instantly just okay, it's back to where it started. So another example that, uh, and I'm using these things just because, I. I, I it's such a great resource, and I've gotten the feeling that some folks still aren't realizing that there's so many samples and documents and wonderful things here. So um, the next example that we'll look at is, I think, so if you type touch, right, you're curious, you know, I'm going to do all sorts of things with touching. And, um, you know, you want to see what samples are there. Well, we've got a few. And who knows what some of them do? We can look at them and see. But the one I'm interested in is touches. And you know, you can open it up in the Xcode project, and you know, you can check out a description. And in this case, 
basically you know, demonstrates how to handle touches, including multiple touches that move multiple objects. And we'll see that's a little challenging in the simulator, but at least you can, you can do two. Um, so, um, so you just open that up. I have one open already, I believe. So let's build and run this and see, see what, what we're going to look at for multiple touches. And then we're going to come back to animation um, in the previous example. So here's the sample. Basically, we have three, three views. Uh, in this case, these little squares. And what I can do is I can touch one of them and basically just drop it somewhere. And, you know, whatever. So let's see. Let me put these in an orientation where I know I can easily do a multi-touch. So, if you press the Option key on your keyboard, you'll get like this other little glyph that shows that, hey, I have two fingers on here, or simulates that I have two. So what I can do now is I can click and see that, okay, I've got two of them. And, I don't know, something just happened. It gobbled the other one up, too. And, whee, okay. So, multi-touch. I don't... I think I can do a third finger in here, but as far as I know, there's only the two. So uh, I think if we double tap, it clears them up and separates them. So uh, all right, so let's see how how the magic happens here. Hey, where did it go? The squares are just images, correct. So let's take a look at them and see. Um, so this particular application has, is like is super bare bones. If you look, it doesn't even. I mean, it says it has a touch touches app delegate, and it's you know it's there. But if you look inside, they didn't even bother with application did finish launching. It's there, commented out. Um, but you know they do have the deallocation stuff, so clean up the window because that is um, that is an outlet um, that's connected through interface builder. The the other thing that to note really quickly, and if I've never mentioned it, so usually I think we might be used to seeing IB Outlet down here. So the so you can tell that this is sort of an older example because this is the way that it sort of used to be recommended that you know well you put your IB Outlet here next to the next to the variable, and now sort of the new way is. And it's just sort of a convention. You can still do either way. Uh, now it's to put it here. Um, but just in case you see it and you're worried, don't worry. Um, so let's look at the interface builder file real quick just to see what we see there. So. We have our window, and you know we talked about this, right? So our window contains our view, and in this case, the view has a bunch of things here. So it, um, our view just has three images and a few labels, and we'll see. You know, so each of the images corresponds to the squares. The labels correspond to the stuff that's going on. It's basically just some feedback for us to know what's happening, and. Files owner has nothing associated with it. It's yeah. So again, this is a very bare bones project, but um, it does a nice job of showing us how to interact with multiple objects. So let's take a look at the view itself. Um, and if we look, you know, so we just saw all those different, all those different things inside Interface Builder. So we've got outlets for all of those. So we have an image view or three image views, and then our labels. Um, so let's see here. So I think I brought this up at one point, and I guess it's um, so the uh, I guess Objective C doesn't really have a way, at least the way we've been using it so far, 
doesn't really have a way of hiding methods from from other folks. So I think early on people asked, what about private methods? So you're, you know, we haven't even discussed really about what's going on inside here, but uh, you know, the items in here are protected, similar to you know how you think about them in C++. Um, but then all the methods that you have, so you know, these things end up generating setters and getters. So all of those are public. Any sort of method that you um, that you put in here, you know. Um, Right, that's accessible to anyone. So using categories, which we talked about way back when, what you can do is you can open up the interface and usually you'll name them, like you'll you'll put something in there. The convention is generally to put private in these in here. Um, but again, it's just convention. So what you can do is you can put these methods in here and they won't necessarily be visible to other folks from the .h file. So just a quick aside. Um, all right, so let's just, uh, you know, let's look at touches began in this particular case. So um, first thing we're doing here is we're saying, all right, touches, any particular touch, they want to see, well, what was the tap count? And they're just doing that just to, um, well, to keep track of them. And then we see we had these two labels. Uh, touch phase and touch info. So the touch phase, right, so we just did touches began, so it's just their way of letting us know, okay, we're in touches began um, in here. So, right, as soon as I place my finger down, we see up in the top, touches began. As soon as I release, touches ended. I'm moving, touches moved. Um, and it's tracking one touch. So that's all, it's just some informational status stuff. So let's see what's going on in this case. So basically they're saying if the number of taps are greater than two, um, well, print those taps. And, uh, and pieces on top. Basically all of this is just saying if, if somehow you've managed to get two things overlapping and you double tap, then um, Basically, it'll separate them out for you. So I think we saw that. Um, so right now they're they're stuck there, and if we look at the bottom, double tap background to move them. So that's what's going on here in this big highlighted area. It's just separating them out. So it's just a little math in terms of you know move this over 50, up 50, left 50. Um, so nothing too super important in there. But in this, the other thing is. Um, Okay, so if if our number of taps are greater than two, then we're trying to separate some pieces out uh, potentially. Otherwise, well, we're not really. This tracking test is just we're just setting it to be blank. So now this is where sort of the multi-touch comes in, and because we have um, so because touches, I wish they didn't have all this other stuff, but because touches is this set. So this data structure, what we can do is, right, we can uh, loop through all of the touches and try to interact with them in some way or see if those touches interact with any of our objects. So if you haven't seen this construct yet, basically it's, it's you know, a valid objective C thing that you can do where uh, basically just you know, a way to iter iterate or enumerate over your collection. In this case, we have an NS set. So for UI touch in touches, um, so grab one of the touches, you know, the first one that you have access to inside touches, and um, in this case, they're they're calling their own method this dispatch first touch at point, and we'll look and see what that does in a second. But again, we we saw this last in the previous example. So touch location in view self um, is basically saying, well, you know, what's the coordinate of the touch? in this view and for event is just we're not worrying about which event it is so remember we could have maybe a, a motion event or uh, or a touch event um, so so let's look at dispatch first touch at point and see what's going on so right we've got these three images 
and we've got multiple potential touches and we want to see, well, do any of these touches actually fall inside uh, inside any of these images? So that's all they're doing here. They're sort of brute forcing, you know, it's a brute force thing where, um, you know, they're making a call to this um, this core graphics routine, CG rect contains point. And, uh, and basically what CG rect contains point takes is uh, it, takes, it takes a rectangle and the point that you want to see whether it's inside it or not. So we're asking the first piece view, so one of those images, uh, for its frame. So remember we had this rectangular frame that um, the frame had some sort of, had a coordinate within the window system, uh, the window coordinate system. And so yeah, we're just saying, is, is the point inside there? If it is, then we have this other function animate something. So we see when we touch a point, and I think, I'm sorry, when we touch a square, we see that it sort of blows up a little bit. And again, we'll be looking at animations shortly, but um, so all that this, you know, this little, this function's doing is just, is looking through all three of these squares and determining, well, which of the three um, or which of the two, if I can get this, which of the two were selected. Um, and if they're selected, then do this animation thing. So that's, that's all that's going on here. Okay, so touches began. We're just looping through the set of touches that the system returns us and doing some, um, making, you know, checking to see which ones were touched. The the next function that we need to look at is touches moved. So now that we've, you know, we've made some touches, now we're actually moving around on the screen in some way. So again, just some, just something to tell us that the touch is moving on screen, uh, if we couldn't tell for some reason. Um, and so same exact thing in this case where we have a set of touches and now we're going to iterate over them and we're going to call some function um, on each of on each of those views, um, with with the actual coordinate of the touch, um, and in this case, if we go a little farther down, then it's more more informational stuff. So just to to say that you know how many touches are going on. Um, so let me zoom in a bit. So we see with one touch, that second line of text there tracking one touch. And so we'd expect it to say that it's tracking two touches now. I don't know. This one's kind of fun to. Uh, um, OK. So. Okay, so let's see, this dispatch touch event. So it's, you know, doing pretty much the same, the same thing that that previous little dispatch thing that was written does, which is basically, you know, let's look at each of the three views that we care about that we're trying to see that are being touched and determine whether the position, the, whether the touch position actually happens inside. And if it does, in this case, so now we're, this is the dispatch touch event for, for moving. So if we're moving, we're basically just saying, okay, well, uh, in this case, this first piece view, um, set the position to wherever it is that the touch happened. So basically follow the touch. Um, so next up then is touches ended. So we've now, we've released and, um, And what's interesting, and it's kind of hard to do this, I guess, but what would be nice to see is we've got a few fingers on screen and we're moving around. If we let one finger up, we should get a touch as ended call. Um, and then we'd be able to look and see whatever is we need to see with that. Um, and it's kind of hard to show that with the simulator and I guess in this small device. I guess maybe we could have seen it up there, but um, 
It's okay. So touches ended, same thing. Loop through all the touches, and let's do something with each of those touches at some particular um, location. And what do we know? Same thing again, right? Check to see in all three of them if you know which of the three this event sort of happened uh, happened in or out of, or you know the end when we lifted off. Um, and then we're going to do something in re in relation to that. In this case, do some sort of animation. Um, and then this was the this extra this extra little bit here where. Um, and they're just doing some special stuff to try to um, to figure out whether some objects are on top of each other or not. And then again, also our last one that we saw, touch is canceled. So something happened, maybe. And let's see, let's see if I can get it to happen inside the simulator. Um, I think something like this should happen. Well, either it could be you're interacting with something and you get a phone call. So you know the phone's going to kind of take over whatever's going on. So it could be that that instant you'll get a touch is canceled. Um, and let's see, let's see if we get one if I slide off of the simulator. So if I'm here and slide off, no, I don't. But um, but yeah. So there are situations where this guy will get called uh, where something. Something weird has happened, and the, this, this calls uh, this touch is canceled. And again, there's if that happens, we're telling things to do various things. This is the dispatch touch event, end event, and that one is doing what? Um, well, we already looked through that one actually. So the canceled and end is doing the same thing. Uh, all right. So any. Any questions about that? Yes? Um, not only related to the text, but were they initializing? Like, were these our plates initially? That being done in some interface builder? Or is this something we've done? Uh, no, so here's our interface builder, and this, is, this was their initial positioning as set up. So we could probably, you know, let's see, move it here and move it here, save. Um, And let's see if that's the default. Um, I'd expect it to be because I don't remember seeing any sort of um, I don't remember seeing any sort of positioning code or anything like that. So they should be on top of each other, but they're not. Uh, maybe I didn't. I thought I did. Although this might be an old one actually that I had open, but no. Let's quit that. Make sure. Touches. Hmm. How strange. Uh, so. Yeah, I'm not sure actually because I'd ex I was expecting them to be in a certain way, but there's nothing. Um, unless somehow some of these touch events are getting called, but there wasn't anything that specifically laid them out diagonally. So yeah, I'm not sure, but definitely, I, if you look through this code, you won't see anything where they're posi positioning those diagonally, as far as I know. Uh, a double tap positions the three pieces in a diagonal. Okay, well then it does. The user will want to double tap when two or more pieces. So I guess it would be interesting to see if somehow touches began gets called at the be or at the start, but I wouldn't. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I mean it moves them diagonally that way, but not diagonally full on. Um, so you know. Build clean because that's weird to me. So we'll move on because I'm not sure. Again, I was expecting them to be a certain way. Okay, yeah. 
I'll look at that and see because now I'm curious too. So, okay, any other questions about touches specifically? Does it seem pretty straightforward? You just have some sets of things and you see, well, is the touch, you know, in this view? And since you have rectangles, you can say, well, you know, does this rectangle contain, you know, so frames are around all of your objects or all of your views. So if you have some point, you can ask, you can say, well, hey, does this point, is it inside this rectangle? And there's some other ones as well where you can check, you know, do these rectangles intersect if you have objects that you've moved around and then you want to do other stuff, but that's not necessarily, not completely related to multi-touch type stuff or just touch. Okay, so let's look at animation, uh, some animation stuff. So all of, uh, all of your UI web views have some simple parameters or have a, have a number of parameters that can be animated for you. And what you can do is you can, you can create what's, what they refer to as an animation block. So you'll say something like begin animation something something. And then inside, uh, after that begin, you can position some things and you know create some transformations and then you can say you know end this block or commit uh, commit these animations and then it'll just kind of do it for you and under the hood it's using core animation which we'll see at some point we'll probably look at more um, seeing as we still have five weeks to go I'm sure we'll see core animation before the end of the quarter but um, in terms of the parameters that are that you can animate uh, I'm trying to think so definitely the, uh, the alpha value, or how transparent or not transparent something is. So you can imagine, I don't know, you could do something where if you click on something for whatever, like a view, for whatever reason, you want that view to dim out. Uh, or maybe you have a dim view, and when you actually touch it, it animates in uh, and becomes more opaque. There's that. I think there's some other aspects, like the center, probably. Like if you move something from one place to another, or say you click in one place, click to another place, you can actually have it animate so it'll just move that position for you. Um, let's see. And then you can just apply a general transformation where you can actually scale or rotate the view as a whole. Uh, and we'll, we'll do that. Let's, I'll start, I think I'm going to start with touches because the, the animation they do is simpler than what the move me example does, but we'll look at, we'll look at both. So let's see. Um, man, I'm, it still bugs me that they're that they show up this way. Uh, so, so we see right when we click, this guy grows a little bit. So all that's happening is you know on the touch began, we figured out which one is being touched, and then we're setting up this animation block that is going to set a transformation that in this case is going to scale the object uh, in x and y. And so let's see that. And so touches began. And remember, we, you know, so it's looping through all the touches and it's doing this di dispatch. And the dispatch actually does this animation. So, um, so we have this, you know, this method that we've created here, or that's been created here, that um, that basically takes care of the animation. So uh, we're passing in the point where the touch happened and in this case an image view and so like I was saying we have these animation blocks and the way you start these blocks is by saying you know UI view uh, begin animation so it's this class method and in this case um, I forget what this one is. It's some we'll look at it and see, but it's some sort of an ID, uh, some sort of a, probably a string to identify the animation. So if you need to reference it in some way later, um, and then the context is if you have some sort of information that you want to pass on, and we're not really going to see that here because so the animations also they have some, they have delegate methods that you can uh, that you can implement and. These delegate methods, you can pass in information like, you know, well, which animation is it? So that would be here, the string, the name, uh, the name of the animation, and um, you know, if there's some sort of data that you want to pass on, it will, would happen through here. And I think when we look at the move me example again, we'll see that they actually use at least the context. They won't necessarily use this one, but um, and as usual, right? We can 
uh, you know, we can quickly see our handy documentation. So begin animations, yes, it does take a string, and which is some sort of animation ID, and then this context, which again just well is a void pointer, so it's just you know data to who knows whatever you want to send along. Yes. Uh, right, so begin animations are class, me it's, it's a class method because the, you know, whoever knows, right, however their animation system is set up, um, it's not, it applies to all, you know, it sort of applies to all views and it's not tied to just, well, well, your, anima your specific animations might be tied to a particular view, the process or the system that handles the animations are not. So, right, so here, all right, we're actually saying, you know, the UI view class, you know, do this, um, set this thing up, and then also we're, you know, so it's basically, you're, you're setting some state. You're saying, okay, uh, we're going to begin an animation, and it's called this, and here's some, potentially some data for it, and then, okay, well, let's, you know, let's give the animation some amount of time to do its thing, and we'll play with that, we'll change it just to see exactly what it does. And then, so right now, right after you do the begin animations, all the stuff, uh, again, is you're setting some state and some things that you want to happen. And in this case, we're taking the view which was passed in, which is our image, and we're modifying its transform. So all our views have a transform associated with it. So it's this matrix that, um, for those of you in 175, you know, takes care of some affine transformations uh, to do all sorts of good things, rotations and scaling and translations. In this case, what we're doing is, again, we're calling core graphics. Uh, so CG affine, hey, there we go, uh, transform make scale. So all it's saying is let's make a scaling matrix and assign it to the transform. And in this case, um, we're just, you know, we have the X and the Y and um, and we'll look, we'll play with that in a second. The last thing to sort of close off this animation block is UI view commit animation. So at this point, you're telling the system, hey, I'm ready to go. Let's, you know, animate for me. So one more time just to see, and I'll go with the middle guy here. So, you know, it's scaling it up by a factor of 1.2. So let's scale it up by a factor of 1.75 just for kicks. And let's just do that in the X direction. Um, Actually, let's do that in the y direction. And so, what I'd expect to happen now is a that's not right. Wait, animate first touch at point. Like something wacky is going on. Like code's not doing what I expect it to do. I position things. Hmm. All right. Well, let's see. Uh, if I don't see it quickly, we're going to jump to a different example, and we'll play there. Um, all right. Touches began. Okay. I might just be in the wrong place, so let's see. So touches began. We do some stuff for everything. Dispatch first touch at point. Okay. Animate first touch at point. Okay. Begin animation. Set the duration. All right. Um, We are going to go to a different example. So remember our good friend Move Me? So I'm sure we could figure it out just in the interest of time since we have about you know 20 minutes. I want to make sure that we see that stuff and then do one last thing. So this one does the same thing, right? When you when you click on it, it sort of does this. It gets chubby. It does a little more too. 
because it kind of gets chubby and then shrinks versus the other one, which just, I think that one did that too. But um, So basically, we should expect to see the same sort of animation block type stuff going on, right? So touches began, um, and they have the same thing, you know, animate first touch at point. And in this case, theirs is a little more involved. Uh, but um, so, like I mentioned, right, the UI view, the animation, you can have some delegates and you can set some methods so that when certain things happen, in this case, when the animation stops, you can call some particular method. Um, and if I've never mentioned this, all your methods, um, basically, if you drop all these parameters, um, and just sort of stick them all together. So we have this particular method, right? Grow animation did stop, finished, finished, uh, or finished context. Um, when you actually talk about this method, you refer to it by its selector. And its selector is just dropping all those other things uh, after the, f you know, so after the colon, the parameter, the, or the variable name, um, and then just appending it to the next little identifier with a colon and the next little identifier with a colon. So that's referred to as a selector. So if what we're telling what we're saying here is, you know, for the UI view, set the animation did stop selector. So when the animation stops, the system's gonna call um, call this guy. Um, so okay. The and this is how you tell it. Well it's a selector. Uh, all right, so same thing going on here. We're doing some sort of scaling. So um, I hope that we see. Uh, maybe I made the last one too large. I don't know. Let's see. So again, I expect this thing to stretch in Y when I click it, right? So that was more noticeable, right? So I still I don't know what was going on with that last one, but um, okay. So. What we're doing here is a non-uniform scale. So what that means is we've, you know, we're scaling x by some particular factor and y by some different factor. Um, and you know, so same thing, right? We create the the transformation and we assign it to the transform and we close off our block and commit the animation. So if we want, right? We just we just change that. Uh, let's make it, I don't know, twice the size. Let's get crazy, almost three times the size. And see what happens. All right, so now it's you really want people to see. Hey, yeah, they press that button. Um, which is kind of fun, actually. I don't know. But um, the other thing we can do is change the time that the animation happens over. Right now, it's happening in 0.15 seconds. Let's make it take half a second and see. Um, So it seems like it's taking longer, right? Whoop. Half a second. Half a second. OK. Um, so like I said, these things are, you know, so we have transformations. And so in addition to, say, scaling transformations, we can do a rotation. So let's make an affine transform. We'll call it rot for rotation. Um, and CG affine. And we've got all sorts of them at our disposal. Uh, CG make rotation. And in this one, I think there's another one that, ex that takes radians. This one takes angles. Let's, when we click, let's make it blow up. And let's make it rotate 45 degrees. Um, and so we do that. And uh, in this case, so what we want to do now is, in order for these transformations to take place, we have to multiply them together. So what we will do, we'll get rid of that. And CG affine uh, concat transform. Uh, concat. So uh, this particular. Um, this particular method will actually take our transformations and multiply them together. So if you remember from good old 22A or wherever it is you took linear algebra, um, 
multiplying a matrix A times B is oftentimes different than multiplying a matrix B times A. Um, so let's see, I don't know, how about, well, let's do it the what I think is the right way. So first, what we want to do is we want to multiply transform by rote, and in my head, and for those play, folks playing around with OpenGL, I, at least the way I think about it is the rotation happens first, and then the scale is going to happen. But let's see. Um, and OK, so we've multiplied those together. We should click, and it should get fat and rotate. Bam. Bam. That's right. OK, ah, that's fun. So, um, so like I said, right, the, it's important to know that uh, that you can't multiply, you know, you have to be careful in the order that you multiply these in. Um, otherwise, you'll get that sort of thing going on, which maybe is what the desired effect is, but um, something to keep in mind. And so what they're doing here is right when you click, it sort of does this first animation. They also have this other stuff. Um, this isn't the way they did this here. Isn't necessarily. Uh, I don't think it's. I don't say the best way. There are other ways. I believe what you can do is you can actually, and I just haven't messed with it enough to to know for sure. But um, you can create an animation, and I think you can set some sort of flag, or do something where it'll then play backwards. Whereas what they've done here is they've done this animation in one direction, and then they sort of try to reverse it um, with this grow animation did stop thing. Um, so I think I think I'll leave that there. Um, again, as you know, if you want to learn more about animations and stuff, this is a great example to start with, and then you know dive into um, into the to other samples and and the documentation. So. I think the last thing, well, any questions about what we just saw? Like, it's all super easy or nothing too wacky? Okay. Um, so, I think what I want to do now is so we had some questions about, well, you know, how do we code some of this stuff up by using maybe, you know, using less interface builder or, you know. So, what we're going to do with this example. Is so we're going to look at the resources, or let's see. So the app delegate. Basically, I'm going to try and make some changes so that we can see how we would do a little bit more stuff in code. And um, you know, so there's sort of this balance where, as you get more used to Interface Builder, you'll sort of get a feeling for, oh, you know what, I really should do this in Interface Builder, or you know what, this is easier if I do a piece of it there and then a piece of it in code. And you'll just kind of slide back and forth, and you'll sort of do that depending on your your level of comfort or wherever you feel is right. And um, sometimes, though, you'll run into situations where you just have to do it in code. And um, so, and there's nothing wrong with that. But when it comes to GUI type stuff, if you can lay it out and see it all and put it in place and be done with it, it's much better than actually having to go in there and say, oh, well, OK, I need this to be at pixel location, whatever, and whatever, and uh, oh, this needs to be so many whatever's away from this other thing. Um, so, OK. So let's see. If we remember right uh, from last time when we walked through this, they are creating this UI view controller. And they're calling init with nib name, which if you remember right, so um, you know, so they're just creating a generic controller because their controller in this case isn't, they don't really want to, they're not using it to do the stuff that controllers normally do in terms of mediating between a model and a view. Um, so, but of course, you know the UI view controller has a view associated with it, and they're initializing it through the nib name move me view, which, if we remember by looking at the resources, was pretty much just a gray backgrounded view, and um, so there wasn't much going on in there. So I think what we'll do is we'll quickly create our own UI view controller 
that has nothing in it and we'll look at some of the methods that are set up in there and we'll kind of see how to build the view ourselves um, not using in it well um, yeah we'll see in a sec why isn't this loading oh. okay so right uh, move me view has this gray background um, okay and so first things first let's make our own controller so we're gonna get rid of this and do something with our own controller so add new file and we're gonna subclass the UI view controller subclass and we're gonna have all of these off because it's not a it's not gonna be a UI table view controller or any of the other stuff um, so move me view controller all right so we've got our move me view controller we're not really gonna put anything inside here but let's see what wonderful goodies the template sort of put in here for us so we see the init with nib name uh, which we could overwrite uh, and actually we could uh, well we'll just ignore it for now but it's there and that's the one that we were using you know we we're using init with nib name uh, sort of the default one on the UI view controller so what we're going to do this time around is we're going to we're going to implement this one called load view so if we look at the very handy comment that someone at Apple was nice enough to leave behind for us so implement load view to create a view hierarchy programmatically without using a nib so um, in this case without using a nib all right well that sounds exciting so um, well, let's see here so we're in our view controller so let's see um, let's import our view uh, move me view dot h so we've got our view and let's so move me view my view and let's just create it move me view alloc and what we're going to do is so the view has a frame right so we need to initialize it with the frame and this so this is generally the uh, most of your views will have this in it with frame um, if you plan on init, on creating them this way um, so in it with frame and then the frame we're going to give it and I always forget this thing here but I think UI application So let's see, I think it was UI application. Let's look. Basically, what I want is I want the, the Windows, uh, I want the application's main, the frame that the application has so that we can just give, you know, make the view the same size. And for some reason, I can't think of the name right now, but um, UI application. Hmm, let's see, I think it's in here. Um, UI application begin ignored open uh, notifications delegate see since I actually have this guy oh, okay well UI screen that's what I wanted application frame so UI screen what? Okay, UI screen, main screen. Anyone, everyone remember that? 
What was that again? UI screen? UI what? Everyone's forgetting. So basically, all I wanted was I just wanted to get access to this frame, which I couldn't remember how to do for some reason. But so UI screen, um, so that just has some information um, about the device and its screen. Um, and in this case, so we're saying, well, what's the main screen, and then what's your frame? So, you know, um, what's your width and height, and what's your, um, what's your origin at? So, okay, load view. So we have, we've created our view and given it some frame, and I could, have, I could have just created a frame here without going through this UI screen thing, and maybe I should have done that. But um, next, what we want to do is say self.view equals my view. So we've created our view, and then let's, let's give our controller that view. And then we're going to say my view release. Because right, this thing's probably doing a retain, and we can check to see. But it, it is doing a retain, uh, because it's going to want to keep it around. And so we're going to release that to clean things up. And so now if we're back to the app delegate, so we commented this thing out, we need to bring in our new controller. So move me view controller. And then now right here, we can say move me view controller. And we'll just call it the same thing, a view controller, just to not have to change more code. A view controller equals uh, move me view controller alloc and we'll just send it um, init kind of just a generic o initialization so what should happen hopefully is everything should now just work so the rest of the code is the same um, all right we assign our view controller probably change this here but let's see um, let's see if this runs first and then we'll make some changes if needed and I think yeah so all right everything you know so this works the way we sort of left it with this weird thing um, all that stuff still works so the one thing that's different is our background is now is no longer gray and that's because the original view that was created in Interface Builder was set to be gray. So if we really wanted to, um, what we could do is, um, well, so we have the view here. Uh, we can say controllers view dot background color equals UI color. Let's make it purple. So, you know, something like the background color is something we have access to inside Interface Builder, but, you know, we also have access to it out here um, in good old code land. So, let's see, you know, we'll step through real quick. And so, remember the, you know, so the main thing we've done, right, we've allocated our own view controller, and inside there, you know, we implemented this load view method, which is it's just a method that will get called for us. Uh, it's not something you want to call yourself, although I have seen some samples from Apple that do call it, which, again, I don't know. I don't think you're supposed to call it yourself directly, but um, I guess there's always exceptions. The So because we're not loading it through a nib, we sort of, you know, right? When something's in a nib, it's, it's this freeze-dried object that when you know when the nib gets loaded up all the memory and things get allocated for us so in this case we're not doing that because we're not initializing with the nib um, so 
we have to allocate that memory ourselves. And that's you know exactly what we're doing here. And we have to give it this, you know, some sort of frame that this view lives in. And you know, we set it, we set it to the controller's view. Um, so you know that was um, so let's see. Uh, what should happen is basically So if if you had a text field, so where do you want? So you just want to have a text field? Yeah. Where? As, as part of the move me view, or is like just? Um, well, so um, so we have the move me view, and it has this placard view. If we wanted to, I guess we could, you know, we could set up a, t a UI text view here. And uh, and if I'm really and yeah, so you know we could set it up here and then in code do the same thing where we allocate it and give it a frame and by giving it a frame we give it its position and all that kind of stuff. Um, and in terms of the delegate, again, you sort of have control over who who you know who you choose to set as a delegate. Um, So I think if we do this real quick, so let's put this load view and hopefully um, because we're pretty much out of time, I just want to look at the stack and let's see you know where. Where did this end up getting, you know, happening? So we know we know that our load view happened, and so we see that UI view controller the same thing, right? When our when our view is nil, it ends up doing like all this other stuff for us. So, um, and you can clearly see that right here, right? No, okay. Uh, assembly joke, sorry. Didn't work. Um, okay. So, right, we've had this discussion before where. If a view controller, when you access the view, if it's nil, then all sorts of good things happen, sort of behind the scenes. And in this case, um, in this case, what the path that it ends up eventually going to is this load view because we didn't initialize it through a nib. Um, so, uh, okay. Any last questions before we sign off? Okay. Check the Google group. First thing tomorrow morning, and or late tonight, and there'll be more information about how to how to take care of uh, of the final project and the information that we need and the things that you need to think about and stuff. So, all right. Okay. See you later.